Henry VIII was king of England for 36 years. During that time, he oversaw many changes that finally led to the Protestant Reformation. He was known for having six wives in a row as he tried to build political ties, have a happy marriage, and have a strong male heir. Henry wanted the Pope to end his first marriage, which is what led him to start the Church of England. Two of his marriages were thrown out, two of his wives died of natural causes, and two of his wives did things like cheat on him or betray him and were beheaded for it. Edward VI's children, Mary Thurne and Elizabeth I, would take turns being King and Queen of England. The Biggest Scandal in the Church's History Martin Luther's complaints of the Catholic Church were made public, and in 1517, King Henry VIII answered him directly. Henry was given the title Fide Defensor by Pope Honorius III because of this. Henry VIII got rid of the houses in England. He took their huge wealth and used it as he saw fit. In just ten years, he would leave the Catholic Church for good and become the supreme head of the Church of England. And what made this change happen? Why did this person, who was once known as the Defender of the Faith, help start the English Reformation? King Henry VIII of England got a divorce so he could get out of his first marriage. Even though anti-clericalism started in England in the 1520s, the Catholic faith still had a lot of backing from the general public. Even more so, Andrew Pedigree, a history professor at the University of St. Andrews, says that Henry VIII had no wish and no need to break with the church. In any case, he didn't have to because he already had so much power over the English church and its finances. By 1527, the fact that Henry's first marriage to Catherine of Aragon did not produce a male child was a big problem. Henry fell in love with Anne Boleyn, who worked as a maid for his wife. When Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn met for the first time, they became fast friends. Mary, Anne's sister, was Henry's first love, which is both interesting and strange. Anne was flattered that the king liked her, but she made the smart choice not to become his lover. Henry had Pope Clement VII give him a divorce from Catherine so that they could no longer be married. He said that God didn't want them to get married because she had been married to his late brother Arthur before. The politics of the Vatican were not in Henry's favor. If things had been different, the Pope probably would have given King Henry VIII of England permission to divorce his first wife and marry again so that he could have a son who would be his heir. Among the princely houses of Europe, writes Pedigree, it was clear that keeping the dynasty going was the most important thing for the ruler. Henry's timing was bad, which was a shame. In 1527, when troops from the Holy Roman Empire ransacked and destroyed Rome, Pope Clement VII fled from the Vatican through a secret tunnel and took refuge in the Castel Sant'Angelo. During that time, Charles V, King of Spain, and a loved cousin of Catherine of Aragon, was called the Holy Roman Emperor. Pope Clement VII was becoming more dependent on the emperor, so he was reluctant to let Henry get divorced from the emperor's aunt. Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, the king's minister, had been talking to the cardinal for years because the cardinal didn't want to give in to Henry's demands, but also didn't want to move things along too quickly. Thomas Cromwell provides a Protestant response. Thomas Cranmer, a Protestant priest, and Thomas Cromwell, the king's most powerful advisor, both argued strongly that the king of England should not be under the pope's control. Henry picked Cranmer to be Archbishop of Canterbury when he wanted to get rid of Catherine so he could marry Anne, and Cranmer quickly agreed to the divorce. Anne Boleyn, who was seven months pregnant at the time, was made Queen of England in a grand event in June 1533. The Act of Supremacy which was passed by Parliament in 1534, split the Church of England from the Catholic Church and made the ruler its head. Pedigree says that England started to accept parts of the ideas of the Continental Reformation. One of these ideas was an English Bible translation, which was made possible by Cranmer, Cromwell, and Henry's Protestant wife. Pedigree calls the process of redistributing wealth in England after the Norman Conquest of 1066, when the Crown took over the Church of England's huge property holdings, the biggest redistribution of property in England. When the land was given to the Crown, Henry used the money to thank his loyal Protestant and conservative advisors. As Pedigree says, this former monastic property is appealing to people of all religions, including the Catholic faith, because it gives them the chance to buy more land. 
Anne Boleyn's daughter's role in the Reformation. Anne Boleyn couldn't have the son that was expected, and by 1536, Henry had already fallen in love with another lady-in-waiting, Jane Seymour. After Cromwell helped get Anne convicted of adultery, incest, and plotting against the king, she was put to death in May of that year. Jane Seymour gave birth to Henry's first male child, King Edward VI, in October 1537. Unfortunately, she had problems after giving birth, and she died only two weeks later. After Henry died in 1547, his son's short rule was led by evangelical Protestant advisors who brought a much more radical reformation to England. This was after Christians and conservatives fought a bloody war that went on for the rest of Henry's life. After Edward died too soon in 1553, his Catholic half-sister Mary I undid many of the changes he had made. Elizabeth I, who was King of England for more than 50 years and was Anne Boleyn's daughter, had to finish what her father had started with the Reformation. Even though drastic changes were made in his name, Henry VIII stayed a devout Catholic his whole life and hated Martin Luther especially. Pedigree comes to the conclusion that the split is the main reason for the fight. If Henry and Catherine had been happy in their marriage, the English Reformation would never have happened. It's very interesting to see how personal events can have such a big impact on history. We hope you liked this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about civilization or time period we should talk about. Also watch another video here.